Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law can be combined to create what is called the ideal gas law equation. It is called an ideal gas law because it makes a number of assumptions about the gases. In particular, it assumes that there is no interaction between gas molecules. Also, it makes the assumption that gas molecules do not occupy any space. So both of these are not entirely true, but we make these assumptions to make our calculations easier. The ideal gas law equation says that for a gas, if we multiply the pressure and the volume of the gas, this will be equal to the number of moles of gas times a constant R times T. Now we must talk about this constant R, and this R constant came from, now we need to talk about our constant R, which was determined experimentally, and this is related to the constants that were present in Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law. So this is a constant, and there's actually two variations of R. These two values are the same, but the units are different. So the first R value is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, and this is formerly an SI unit, but when we use this R, the pressure is in pascals and the volume is in meters cubed. Typically, we only use this R when we are doing calculations involving the energy of a gas, and this is because the unit of joule is present. So when we are doing other calculations involving a gas, we typically use this variation of R, which is 0 0.082057 liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And the reason why we typically use this R value is the pressure is in ATM and the volume is in liters. In all cases, you want to convert temperature to Kelvin, and remember, if the gas is discussed in terms of grams, that you need to convert those to moles. In reality, there's only two types of ideal gas law problems that we will encounter in general chemistry. The first type of problem, you'll be asked to calculate an unknown variable from the ideal gas law equation, so either pressure, volume, temperature, or number of moles of gas, when you are given all the other values, or at least some way of calculating the other values. So I like to call this the static version. So notice none of the other variables are changing. So the gas is static and none of the variables are changing. So volume isn't changing or temperature isn't changing. The other type of ideal gas law equation is where we are changing some of these values. And once again, it depends. So we can change the temperature of a gas, a volume of a gas. And the idea is you want to calculate some new value after a gas has changed. So here, here you can identify this type of problem because, so we will talk about the second type of problem in a subsequent video for this chapter. For the first type of ideal gas law problem, when the gas is not changing, we will need to use the R value. And so the R value has some very specific units on it. And so we will need to convert any given units to the units that are given in R. So here's an example. I have a gas in a 18.5 liter cylinder. The pressure for the gas is 11.2 atm and the temperature is 28.2 degrees C. And I want to calculate how many moles of the gas are present. So we are looking for N inside of our ideal gas law equation. And so the first thing I want to do is solve for N in this equation. The other variables were given. So pressure was given at 11.2 atm. The volume was given at 18.5 liters. The temperature we need to convert from degrees C to Kelvin. So after we do that, the temperature is 301.4 Kelvin. And then the R value, remember, we want to use the R value that's consistent with these units. So we use the version that is 0 0.08205. When we plug these numbers in, we get that the number of moles of gas are 8.38 moles. And I knew to solve this problem in this fashion because the gas was static, so notice none of the variables were changing during this calculation. So you use the PV equals NRT equation, solve for the unknown, and then plug in the given values and calculate.